Good morning, guys. Hey, so to start out this video, um, honestly, there's a whole lot more things I love about this scarab than what I hate about this scarab. But I'll go over the things that I love first. As you can see, we're, we've been cleaning up <laughs> after we got back from a week at Flaming Gorge, which was amazing, by the way. But, uh, um, for our family, it's just, it's the perfect boat. And if there were just a couple of things that were fixed by Scarab, it would definitely make it the most perfect boat. So first thing, um, well, first thing I love is this swim platform. Got our cleaning bag here on it. Dude, that swim platform, the water sits from here to here, depending on how many people you have in the boat. We've had 20 people in this boat. And I will tell you, you have about as much room with 20 people in the boat as you do with 10. And I'm gonna show you why in just a minute. Come on. Up on the boat, okay. Next thing I love is these boxes for the ropes. Seriously? Rope management is like a big deal on a boat. And this makes rope management super easy. And so even if they come in, like we'll still, a lot of times we'll leave the rope connected up there and then we'll coil it all down in the box. So there's just a rope running from there down to the box. It just keeps uh, ropes pile up fast. This bed right here, uh, this uh, lounge area is so nice because when you're in the boat, and you've got little kids that you're teaching, and I'll show you some of these clips too. You can actually get going up to speed, put them on the back of that with a knee board or whatever, and you can just slowly ease them out into the water. And then you can just sit right here. For most rangers, they consider anything um, this side of the swim platform is still being inside the boat. It's more of an opinion thing. Some rangers think that you have to be in here, but it depends. Okay. Um, yeah, so check this out, like, all the space, it's just insane. Also, another thing I love is that it's a toilet, but you know what? It's, we've only used it as a toilet, like, twice. We've got, I think, like 70 hours or something like that on this boat. That's just this year, just since April 1st. And, uh, we've only used it twice. Usually, it's a great space for extra life jackets and things like that. Um... The next thing I love on this thing is, well, you know, I'm going to get to that in a second because, hmm, yeah, I'm ready to, uh, to share with you what I hate about this. All right. See under here? Okay. This is the side bench, right? Okay. The side bench has this little control panel. That big red knob right there, that's the turn off switch for the power. So you don't drain your battery, right? It's a good thing. Well, there's two settings. You turn it like that. Now it turns the power on because this boat has two batteries. So it turns the power on to both batteries, but they're separate, right? So now it depends on how you turn the key. But if you continue to turn it all the way, that setting right there, that connects both batteries together. Okay. Now, we did not realize what a big deal this was. And every single time we turn the power on, we turn it all the way. So we'll make sure it was all the way on, right? Well, what happens is then when you're just sitting there in your driveway cleaning it, or it's in the garage, then, and you're listening to your music, you're actually draining this other battery that runs the motor. That doesn't seem like a big deal, right? Okay. Let me tell you, it is an enormous deal. So, that knob that I just showed you earlier, um... Because we had it switched all the way on every single time, 
when we'd wash the boat, when we cleaned the boat. Um, one time when we were on the lake, that was a close call. The batteries, uh, we let the, the radio run too long. It was for a few hours um, down at Lake Powell. I went to turn on the motors and they wouldn't quite turn on. So I turned everything off, let the batteries rest for about 30 minutes, and then turned it on and it fired right up. Um, what I did not realize was happening was something inside the computer of the boat was recording each one of these occurrences. And there's a relay. And that relay would do this thing called fluttering when the volts got below, much below 12 volts on the battery. Uh, 15 is full, right? And so if it got like 11 and a half or so, um, they would flutter and it would create friction. Uh, the, the main software system does not deal with that. And so we were out in the middle of Utah Lake. We've been playing for the whole day. And suddenly the main computer freaked out. We didn't know what had happened. We turned the boat off, brought in the kids from tubing. The wind was blowing. Decided to head back. It was seven o'clock at night. And we couldn't start the boat. We turned it. It would turn over beautifully, but it wouldn't start. I'm like, holy crap. Has the battery charge dropped low enough that it won't actually start the boat even though it's turning over nicely? That's what I was thinking, right? But I looked at our fuel and we still had half a tank. <laughs> it definitely wasn't fuel. So we tried for an hour to start the boat. And a couple of times I thought about it. It seemed like it was almost going to start, but it wouldn't start. And I'm like, well, I don't know what else to do. I mean, it's going to be dark. It's windy. We throw an anchor out so that uh, turn turned the boat. So we were facing... Um, we were facing the uh, the marina, even though we were roughly uh, two miles from the marina. It's a big lake. Um, and uh, I just called 911 um, so they could send a ranger out to come get us. Um, we were flashing SOS with our, uh, we have a, a bright spotlight that we put up on top. And so we were just, you know, touching on the battery, the, the cables onto the battery. I taught my little, uh, 12 year old son how to how to do SOS so he was doing SOS um, tapping on the battery terminal to turn the light on and off um, after about an hour we had a boat that showed up um, super cool people they were amazing they actually had jumper cables so we hooked it up to the battery tried to start it again uh, even though it was turning over great um, it didn't change it at all nothing started then the ranger showed up about that time um, he ended up just towing us back. We take it into the dealership. Um, come to find out what had happened is the main program on the boat had freaked out because of the fluttering of the relays and had deleted part of the programming on the boat. That's a big issue, right? That's not a little issue. That's a big effing issue. So... It took them a day. They reprogrammed it. They had to uh, get the code from Scarab. Scarab is very, very uh, protective of its uh, intellectual properties for its software and its boats. Um, but it took them about a day. They finally got that stuff from Scarab, then reprogramming it was pretty easy. So I'm asking the, the maintenance manager there at Moto United, like, how can I make sure this never happens again? He's like, well, don't let your batteries go low. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But I've got nine kids. I've got little kids running around. Something's going to get left on. The batteries are going to run low at some point. It's just going to happen. That's why we carry a backup battery. It's going to happen. And he's like, well, I mean, that's really your only solution. Dude, but I, I wouldn't let it go. And I kept him on the phone for probably an hour. I'm like, dude, you got to give me something more than that. And uh, he's like, well, just make sure, you know, everything's turned off and you don't run your batteries low. I'm like, again, that's the stupidest thing ever. We didn't come up with a good solution. So I'm in panic mode at this point. I'm like, I've got this incredibly amazing boat with this really shitty problem. And so don't do that. You did not save anything by consolidating both to one switch. You just turned the boat into a ticking time bomb that will shut off and abandon you 
when you least expect it. So fix that scarab, please fix that. Matter of fact, retrofit, fix this. Now we know the issue. We're not going to make that mistake again. We're super, super hypovigilant on that, but somebody else is going to, and that's not cool. I mean, there's lakes like Lake Powell, uh, Flaming Gorge, um, usually have enough traffic, but Flaming Gorge is huge too. Um, there's enormous lakes, <laughs> get out on the ocean and suddenly your boat won't start because you turned the, the knob too far. Dude, I will harp on this thing forever. This thing is ridiculous. Fix that. You've got an amazing boat here, but dude, that's, that's not okay. So anyways, that's it guys. That's, that's what I hate about my scarab. Um, honestly, everything else I love about it. There's some little like, like fine little chintzy stuff that shouldn't be an issue. I don't think, um, like, I don't know, the snaps, um, the, the cup holders, the vine around the cup holders that it, it comes up over the cup holder sometimes to just, none of this is big deal stuff. This is just little chintzy stuff. Um, I will tell you another thing though, Scarab, you fix this thing and this would be really actually since let me get, show you from another perspective, the beanie, uh, the, I'm sorry, the bevany top. Dude, I love that bevany top. That's so nice. But you know what? The top of that ball is 12 feet tall on the trailer. And we have a, a decent sized door in our garage, but it's 10 feet, not 12 feet. So even though we have an oversized garage and I figured I could keep this in my garage, I can't. I can't get it in there because that bevany does not fold down. It's solid, it's fixed in place. So if you can figure out a way to make that bevany float fold down, I've got my, we do steel fabrication, so I've got my guys at the shop working on a, on a design that we can retrofit on this. But, uh, um, yeah, I, I'd say those two things, that would, that would just be awesome. Um, love this boat, man. We've got now, how many hours? Yeah, 70 hours on this boat since April 1st and we're at what July middle of July right now. So yeah, it's, it's just, it's so fun. Um, yeah. And I'll get more videos of, uh, of us playing. Um, I gotta tell you when we go out to boat, so focus is just making sure the kids have fun and making sure you know, our friends that come with this, which is cool because we can fit two families, two good sized families on this boat. Um, and, uh, it's, it's just a blast. So, all right. Thanks guys. Be safe. Bye.